Et merci, merci beaucoup. Euh, je vais faire ma présentation en anglais. C'est mieux pour vous, je pense. So, uh, thank you very much for, for uh, the invitation of coming here and uh, presenting uh, our work on, on this case on, on Almetrics. And what I want to have with you today is a discussion on, on let's say, the main challenges, the main problems, maybe also the opportunities that uh, uh, Almetrics may have for research evaluation or other types of, of uh, yeah, evaluation activities. So just just a brief outline of my uh, of my of my talk. I will start with an introduction to the concept of uh, of Almetrics, so the main idea of, of Almetrics. Then uh, we will review some of the tools and sources that are available to to collect uh, uh, Almetric data. Then I will have also some comments on, on some of the results that, that we have found on, on, on Almetrics, some of the of the some of the facts that we start to know about uh, about Almetrics. And finally, uh, I will have a more conceptual discussion with you about, uh, about Almetrics, so the, the, the pros and cons and, and limitations of, of Almetrics. So let's, let's start with, with the concept. So why, uh, why is this new idea of, of Almetrics? Uh, why it has emerged with such a strength? Well, somehow to answer that question, we have to go so a step back, and then we have to, to consider what is the main question in, in research evaluation. So and, and that may, the main question in research evaluation is, uh, for, for scientists, for research evaluators, for policy makers is, so what is the impact of my research? So what is the value of the, the research uh, performed in my university? To answer that question, we counted with two main methodologies so far. On the one hand, uh, the peer review, on the other hand, uh, citation analysis. And in any case, the, let's say the philosophy of Almetrics can be found in the, in the so-called uh, Almetrics uh, Manifesto. Uh, also, frequently, uh, uh, Almetrics are seen as metrics about articles, or in other words, article-level metrics. But I, I must say that this is not exclusive of, of Almetrics, so citations are also article-level metrics, and, and, and peer review evaluations can be done also at the article level. So it's, it's not really something that is exclusive of, of, uh, uh, of Almetrics. Uh, in a way, Almetrics are seen as, as uh, yeah, uh, a way of, uh, of covering uh, other aspects of, of the impact of, of uh, scientific work, like, for example, views, downloads, readerships, mentions in social media, in, in also in news media, in magazines, in, in journals, and this type, this type of, of, uh, uh, yeah, of, of mentions. So given this idea of, of that they intend to cover other aspects of, of uh, impact, they are also seen as, uh, as alternative, and particularly an, uh, as an approach to perhaps capture uh, uh, this idea of societal impact. This is something that now is, is, is quite hot, the idea of measuring social societal impact. So then and metrics are many times perceived as, as being able to, to capture uh, this, this type of impact. Uh, from our perspective, sorry for, for the slide, uh, some of them will have some changes because of the Mac uh, PC incompatibility. But uh, uh, from our perspective, let's take uh, Almetrics as, as simply mentions of scientific outputs in social media, like uh, Twitter and Facebook, or many, many more others. But uh, also uh, uh, mentions or, or uh, yeah, savings in crowdsourced tools like, for example, Mendeley. Uh, so then, um, uh, at CWTS, a couple of years ago, we, we did, uh, uh, so when we started our research line on, on, on Almetrics, uh, the first thing we did was uh, an analysis of the most important tools that uh, are, were available for, for Almetrics.
in a way, basically, this is the, this is the key idea. So this is so the idea that someone reads a paper and gives a qualitative, a quality uh, uh, comment on the content of the paper. So this is what we always wanted, to, to have yeah, experts, people to say, yes, this is good, or maybe this is not that good. So that means that if we perform any analysis, any evaluation analysis, we will find uh, that just uh, a small percentage of, of the papers of, of a unit can be considered in the, in, in the evaluation, and that's, that, that, that may be problematic. Also, for most of the tools, we haven't found uh, uh, tools in order to normalize the indicators, so to, to find if, if the number of reviews in, in uh, say, neuroscience uh, are the same as in psychology, or if they are comparable. And we have also found in, in, a, in, a, in a recent paper that uh, actually, uh, although, uh, for example, F1000 is able to pick up some of the most highly cited papers, it also misses a lot of them. And, 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 and vice versa, F1000 also picks up papers that uh, in the end are not highly cited. So in a way, we have a kind of mismatch uh, between the citations and the uh, uh, review, uh, say the, the comments of the, of the experts. So it's not, not really uh, yeah, a perfect match. Well, the second, the second uh, group of, of tools is what we call uh, web-based uh, web citations. Actually, we could argue if they are actually all metrics. And we could argue that because, in fact, what they do is to collect uh, publications and citations from the web. And also, this lack uh, of or this difficulty in scalability also makes the normalization of indicators difficult, because then you cannot establish reference values for, for example, disciplines. And finally, we have the problem, of course, of the, of the low level of the data quality. So, so Google Scholar has uh, still uh, a lot of problems in, in, in terms of, of data, still a lot of uh, duplicated citations, for example. So the same paper with two versions citing another paper, the two versions count as two citations. So that's, that's wrong. But in any case, of course, we have to take, uh, so these tools are important. So more and more uh, policymakers are paying attention to them. And many times, a typical question is why you don't do the study in Google Scholar? Well, precisely because of all these, of all these problems, especially if you want to do a large scale study. Uh, it's, 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 it's not really feasible. But yeah, as I say, we, we have to keep them in mind. So they're here, probably they're here to stay. Another problem is, is the difficulty in, uh, in uh, scalability. Uh, uh, Mendeley has announced recently that they have improved their API. In the past, it was very difficult to collect data. If, if now, it, it, that problem is solved. So it could take months to collect uh, uh, metrics on a substantial amount of, uh, of, of uh, publications. Uh, somehow also this difficulty in scalability also in, in makes uh, in, uh, difficult to uh, provide normalized indicators, again normalized indicators by, by disciplines or by any other uh, uh, clustering of, of papers. And of course we also have to mention the, the, the low level of data standardization. So in, in that sense Mendeley is, is quite problematic. So there are a lot of duplicates, different versions of the same paper. Not all the papers have DOIs or, 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 or unique identifiers. So it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite uh, difficult. But well, I, I think they are also trying to solve uh, most, of these, most of these problems. But yeah, basically these are the main, let's say the main, the main tools at the moment in terms of, uh, of Almetrics. Okay, then, so then let's move to the, to, the next, uh, to the next section, and then we're going to see, well, wh what do we know about Almetrics? So what all these uh, researchers working on, on this field have found. So in that sense, it's, it's really a new emerging research line. So there are researchers in, 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 in Montreal, in, the, in Leiden, of course, in Spain, in the UK, in the US. So there are popping up many research groups that are focusing on, on, on this idea of, of Almetrics. So far, we can talk about, let's say, four main topics that have been discussed by, by the researchers. So one is, is coverage, so the coverage of, of the tools, the coverage of publications by these tools. Second one is uh, correlations, so particularly correlations with citations, but also with other uh, bibli bibliographic uh, elements. A third line is related with data problems and data inconsistencies, so also, also a big issue in, in, in Almetrics. And finally, the content and meaning. So what, 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 what do these uh, metrics mean? What, what they can tell us? 
But I might say at the moment we have more, many more unanswered questions than answered questions. So in a way it's, it's, it's really something that we, we have to, to, to develop further. In any case, let's start with some of the results in terms of, of coverage. So we did this study recently, and basically we looked at a random sample of publications uh, from the Web of Science, 20,000 publications from the Web of Science, and we searched uh, metrics in, in impact uh, story. We also considered a relatively large period of time, so from 2005 to 2011, and basically here you have the, the main results. So in this, this first table, what is telling us is that uh, the main Almetric player is, is Mendeley. So Mendeley is, the, is the, say, the king of, of Almetrics. It's the one that covers uh, more papers, more than any other. So tweets, Facebook have really a, a much smaller uh, presence, uh, coverage of, of, uh, of publications. In fact, what we find many times is that to uh, have Almetrics, it's actually better to have shorter titles and shorter papers. So there is a much better coverage of, of, of this type of, of uh, publications. But, but in a way, it's also an indication of what type of content is, uh, is covered by these tools, by, by yeah, Twitter or Facebook. Then we have the, the problems of data, data problems. So on the one hand, we have the problems of uh, inconsistencies uh, across data sources. So for example, uh, we did a simultaneous data collection from PLOS ONE and Metric.com and Mendeley. So we search for the same set of publications exactly the same day and the same time. And we have found that uh, uh, there are different counts depending who is giving you the count. So, but, but the problem is we cannot find a clear systematic explanation for those differences. So it's not that one has always more and some other has less. No, it's, it's sometimes one of them have more, sometimes less. So we, we couldn't really find a, a, clear, a clear explanation. Also another colleague has found that uh, when you use Mendeley, Mendeley itself alone, and you search for publications, uh, in, in the same publications in Mendeley at different points in time, you also get different scores. Without this meaning that they are always higher. Actually, sometimes they are, they are lower. And so these are, these are puzzling uh, questions. So uh, how is it possible that you get less? It could be because people remove the papers from, uh, from the libraries. But we also heard from some people in Mendeley that, no, 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 we, we don't remove uh, the readership. So, yeah, the, so let's say these are all problems that need to be solved if we want to use these tools with some, uh, yeah, with some value. Then we have the problem of manipulation and validity. So uh, some colleagues in Spain have published that it's very easy to, to manipulate Google Scholar. So it's very easy to boost your, your citation. So if you want to know how to do it, just we can discuss it later, later on. But in a way, manipulation is also, uh, is also uh, easy with Almetric. I said you can buy, you can buy tweets and, and, and Facebook likes and all these things, so it's, it's possible. So uh, also, uh, uh, the, the, the colleagues in Montreal have found that, uh, for example, papers uh, in archive, uh, many, many of the tweets that these papers receive are provided by bots, bots and cyborgs. So basically, they are automated tweets. So they, and they challenge the idea of, 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 for example, Twitter as a social media uh, metric. Because if they are automated, they, they, they mean maybe initially nothing. So, okay, these are, these are all, the, all the challenges we, we are finding. And then we have, the, the, say, the content. So we also took a look at, uh, say, the titles and the, and the topics of the... Ooh, really? <laughs> Let's make it five. <laughs> Uh, so we look at the content of the, of the papers that were uh, covered, uh, so and then we, we just look at the distribution of citations and all metrics across disciplines and across, across topics, and topics take the terms in the titles of the papers. I'm going to be a bit fast now. I'm not sure if you can see well the figure. So this is, this is uh, a map of science. So on top, uh, on top uh, yeah, whatever. In top, we have the, the more medical fields. On the right, we have chemistry and physics. On the left, we have the social sciences and humanities. When we compare citations with Almetrics, we see how Almetrics disappear from the right-hand side. So again, this idea that Almetrics are not about complicated topics, but more about layman, layman terms, layman words. OK, and finally, I just want to mention some of the conceptual uh, aspects of, uh, and challenges. Uh, so a bit of a summary of also of all, what all we know. Let's say there are, there are four conceptual aspects in Almetrics. 
so in a way, this is the type of question we, we may face in the future. Or for example, what is the meaning of a tweet or a Mendeley reader in terms of, of, of a, from a performance point of view? The third argument is, is also one of the, the most popular ones, is the speed. And it's true, so citations take time. So you publish a paper, someone has to read it, and then still cite it. So publish, uh, write a new paper and get it published, citing your paper. All these tools are much faster. So with Twitter, you may get hundreds of tweets just in hours after your paper is published. But then we, 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 we may also need to, to ask ourselves, what is faster always better? Or maybe it's simply a sign of superficiality. People do things without really having read the papers, without having a meaning about uh, their, their opinion about the paper. Also, we can mention, we can refer to the idea of the sleeping beauties. So, okay, these this metrics can be faster, but they still can imagine that there may be papers that are published today. They go unnoticed for maybe months, and then all of a sudden they get picked up by, by a highly uh, relevant Twitter user, and then it gets boosted in, in Twitter. So that's, that's also possible. So it's something that conceptually I can, I can imagine that still could happen. Then we have the question of openness. So that uh, openness is good, that things are easy and free and everybody can access the data and can check things. So that's, I mean, that's, that's good and we have no, no argument against this. But what we can say is that we also need transparency and consistency. Actually, this is probably more important. If we're going to evaluate scientists or programs or universities, we need to know how this data is collected, how, how, what's, the, what's the, the cleanness and, and, and the robustness, the robustness of, this, uh, of this data. So then transparency and consistency are perhaps even more important than, than openness. Yeah, I will, I will uh, wrap up. So okay, this, this is going to be my last, uh, my last slide. Uh, so then there are many challenges. So if we want our metrics to, to, to be useful in the future, we need to meet some of these, uh, we need to, yeah, to solve some of these challenges. The first one is the conceptualization. We need meaning for these metrics. The, the, uh, we need to standardize tools and data. In other words, we need better data. Uh, we need to be able to do uh, large-scale studies, so not just a few papers of a researcher or, or, or a journal. We need to be able to, to for example, uh, uh, have uh, normalization reference values. Manipulability needs to be also taken into account. Cybers, bots, uh, possibility of buying tweets. So all these things need to be, need to be uh, uh, corrected. Uh, and then, yeah, being able to produce and use these new metrics and in a way, we also need to be careful with the potential trivialization that these tools may have in the end. In the sense that, okay, I can look at my papers, I can look at uh, my, pa my colleague's paper, but I cannot do really anything of value with that. And then it's just for, say, well, gossip or, or, or minor things. But perhaps the most important challenge is that in the end, all these tools, all these metrics must be used and accepted by the scientific community. In the end, the scientific community must see themselves in, in these metrics. And well, this is, this, this is my talk, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.